In the wastelands of 19th century California, Bambino, a stout man nearly six feet tall and a horse thief who also specializes in armed attacks, wanders the desert without ammunition or food, but only with a saddle on his shoulder. Meanwhile, nearby, four men have set up camp for lunch and to rest their heat-weary horses. As they cook the beans, Bambino approaches with his weapon drawn, startling them. He looks for a star on their chest, and not finding it, confesses that he is a bandit like them who crossed the desert to avoid arrest. The men breathe a sigh of relief and resume cooking, glad that he is not a sheriff. In fact, Bambino is playing smart, and he borrows some ammunition for his gun, after which he points it back at the men and orders them to hand over their money, horses, and even their much-loved beans. While untying the horses, one of the criminals takes a rifle and shoots Bambino, but discovers to his disappointment that it is empty since Bambino is very cunning. When he tries to steal his gun, he receives a very strong punch to the head that instantly knocks him out. Unconcerned about the threats, Bambino takes all their horses and rides away. A little later we see another man intent on crossing the desert in turn. His name is Trinity, and he is Bambino's younger brother. He is a lazy, ill-dressed gunfighter who likes to roam the west on his three-wheeler in search of trouble and beautiful women. When the four criminals notice him from afar, they decide to play smart. They leave their wounded friend, apparently mentally disabled after Bambino's punch, by the fire and hide. When Trinity approaches, they point their guns at him. However, mistaking him for a mere vagrant with no money, they let their guard down and go back to cooking, making the same mistake twice in a row. Trinity, in fact, points the weapon at them, takes their beans again, and then orders the men to beat each other up so that the last man standing will be spared death. When the four finish beating each other, they discover that Trinity has now disappeared, and it was just a way to distract them. Resuming his journey, Trinity reaches a destroyed house, which turns out to be the home of his parents. When he goes inside, he discovers that Bambino is already there while bathing. At the sight of his brother, Bambino hastily gets dressed with the intention of leaving, as he hates him with all his heart and does not kill him just so as not to upset his mother. However, his father, a retired alcoholic and former outlaw, orders him to stay for a few days as he is sick with a heart condition and about to die. The family sits down to eat, but before they can enjoy their fine food, the mother notices the four criminals sneaking up to the house. Without giving it much thought, the woman takes her rifle and hides in the back, so when the criminals break into the house she appears from behind and disarms them, after which she embarrassingly kicks them out of the house before robbing them of their money. That evening, as the two clean their weapons, the father begins to cough and thus realizes that his time has come. He calls the family to him for his last words, and forces Bambino to promise to protect his younger brother and teach him the trade of horse thief. Although Bambino is not happy about this, he has no choice but to accept since it is their dying father's last request. The next day, they then set off on an adventure and in search of the easy money, and on the way they notice a wagon on the prairies and immediately decide to rob it. When they approach with their faces covered, they discover that it is a farming family in trouble, but Bambino does not seem to give it much thought because he only cares about the money. However, when Trinity takes a look inside the wagon, he meets the peasant's beautiful young daughter, and the two instantly fall in love. Trinity then decides to help the family, first by changing the wagon's broken wheel and later by also giving them money to take their sick son to the doctor. They then drive away toward town while the peasants are shocked by this encounter with the strange gun-toting couple. Upon arriving in the nearby town of Tuscosa, Bambino heads off to buy some guns and ammunition, while Trinity goes to the saloon to swallow a few shots of alcohol. When he gets there he sees some elegant men playing poker, among whom is Wild Cat, a professional player. Bambino rushes in before his brother starts some fisticuffs, but discovers that his intention is only to cheat at poker and win the game. They approach the table and play a couple of hands, winning all the money wagered by the other players and surprising those present with Trinity's cheating skills. Wild Cat is unwilling to accept his own defeat, suspecting the two of them of cheating, so for this reason Trinity slaps him around and demonstrates his own inhuman agility with his hands, making him want to face him in a gun duel and meet his death. With the money earned from the poker, the two buy fancy clothes, and when the peasant family arrives in town, the daughter immediately recognizes Trinity's eyes and thanks him for their help. The man, in order to strut his stuff, lies to the girl by claiming that the two of them are federal agents, and pretend to be horse thieves just to keep an eye on the territory. As he tells the lies he is overheard by the men of Parker, a wealthy armed smuggler who controls the whole town, and they immediately run to tell him the news. The two in turn head to the town's luxurious restaurant, where they demonstrate their criminal ways and annoy the people present, although the women are attracted to Trinity's beauty and pay no heed to it. That day Parker summons the two to his estate, believing that the two are really federal agents sent to get evidence of his illegal activity, and bribes them with $4,000 not to snoop around. Seeing the easy money, the brothers apparently accept the deal and head to San Jose, a nearby town, 
but not before showing off their skills with a gun so that the criminals can see that they are not mere lawmen. When they arrive in San Jose with the intention of doing some horse stealing, they notice that the local sheriff treats his own citizens whom he is supposed to defend badly, and they become suspicious. They head back to the saloon, apparently their favorite place. Here they are noticed by Parker's men, who believe the two corrupt officers are on their side and so greet them, but Bambino misunderstands and approaches them to threaten not to mess with them. Stingery Smith, the local bandit leader who himself works for Parker, intrudes into the discussion and provokes them into a fight, believing that the two of them don't stand a chance. The brothers start beating up everyone present, even having fun, and finally also decide to cash in by taking the criminals to the sheriff, being that they are wanted and have a bounty on their heads. When they get to the sheriff's office, they realize that he is also working for Parker, but they still order him to put Stingery and his men in jail for a few days so that they can have time to do some robberies without other criminals underfoot. The sheriff, however, reminds them to stay away from the town friars because they are under Parker's control, not knowing that doing so only triggers their curiosity. Later, the two thieves pull up in the weeds waiting for a perfect opportunity to pull off a heist, but they hear voices and discover that they are once again the farm family in need of help. Again Trinity is happy to help them, using the opportunity to spend some time with the young daughter. The farmer is pleased with the good spirits of the two and invites them to stay for dinner with them as a token of thanks. That night, while Trinity and the girl are at the river, they look at the stars and kiss, but before they can continue the meeting child calls Trinity to leave and focus on their main objective. The next day in town, while planning a hit on a stagecoach, they notice local peasants with swollen faces, and discover that it is the work of priests who are in the habit of beating up worshippers who come to church for confession. With the intention of finding out what is going on, and hoping that a lot of money they can steal is involved, they snoop around. Bambino heads to the church for confession, and the priest is shocked at all the crimes and sins the man has committed during his life. But when he tries to bless Bambino, the latter, not being a believer, misinterprets the gesture and demolishes the confessional, terrifying the priest. Trinity then arrives and together question the frightened priests, discovering that these are not the ones beating up the faithful but are Parker's men in disguise, who have been sent here to hide the smuggled weapons. The two leave, and Bambino forces Trinity to prepare for the robbery of a stagecoach, trying to avoid trouble with Parker. But the younger brother does not follow Bambino's directions, being stubborn, and returns to the priests, where the peasant family is temporarily housed by the friars. Here he makes love to the girl he is in love with, but later Trinity sees an approaching wagon and discovers the place where Parker is hiding the smuggled goods. Parker's men deliver $50,000 to the friar that is to be kept for Parker's arrival, but Trinity puts the bandits to flight with bullets. Trinity then thinks of a plan to help the friars and get their hands on the loot. The next morning, Bambino boards the stagecoach as a passenger, as part of their plan in which Trinity is to be a thief and rob them all. However, Trinity attacks early and decides to make fun of his brother, robbing him of all the money and sparing the other passengers by not taking a single penny from their pockets. As a result, Bambino becomes angry and searches for Trinity, finding him at the friars. Trinity manages to assuage his anger by explaining that he did not want to attract the attention of the feds by carrying out a petty theft, as he plans to defend the $50,000 loot from Parker's men. Bambino delighted, agrees to the plan and prepares for the attack. On the same day, Parker, learning of the attack by the two fake feds he bribed, goes to the friars with a gang of criminals for revenge. The priest, by cunning, manages to convince the attackers to enter, leaving their weapons outside, as it is the house of God. They are then trapped and forced to deal with slaps and punches from Trinity and Bambino, who are also joined by friars tired of past assaults. Although the two prevail, they are disappointed to discover that the priests have also asked federal agents for help, who arrive and arrest all the criminals. Having no other choice, and still being wanted by the law, the brothers continue to pretend to be agents themselves and hand over all the stolen money to the police chief, who then suspects nothing. The brothers walk away, again remaining empty-handed, and while discussing what to do they again run into the peasant family in need of help, and Trinity gallops in their direction. Subscribe for more videos like this one, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help grow the channel. Thanks for watching.